You know, one of the things I've observed traveling all over the world now for five years is that, you know, if you try to demoralize young people for 60 years by telling them that their ambitions are pathological and world-destroying and that everything's predicated on power and oppression, you actually do demoralize them, especially when you add to that the vision of a, a necessary apo necessarily apocalyptic future brought on by that ambition that can only be rectified by having everyone, especially the poor, give up pretty much everything they own. It's like, well, we're pretty much oh, done with Oh, and also self-hatred, Well, by the way. Like, well, and justified. massive amounts of despising yourself. Just justified self-hatred as a as a as a parasite on the on the surface of the planet. Yeah, I think we've pretty much had enough of that. In this compelling video, Jordan Peterson reflects on the state of today's youth and the profound impact of societal messaging on their aspirations and self-worth. With his characteristic insight, Peterson highlights the detrimental effects of decades of demoralization where young people have been inundated with narratives of impending doom and self-hatred. He sheds light on the pervasive culture of victimhood and powerlessness that has gripped many, instilling a sense of hopelessness about the future. Throughout the video, Peterson's impassioned plea for courage and self-reliance resonates, inspiring viewers to take a stand against the forces of demoralization and censorship. I mean, your situation is instructive, you know. You took these technological tools that are at your disposal and you're doing that right now, and you decided to say what you had to say. And, you know, your future, as far as I can tell from the limited time we spent together, your future seems to be pretty damn bright. And there's no reason that can't be the case for everyone. And so it is a very sad situation that we've managed to demoralize young people so badly and to split them apart, and that's a real catastrophe. But by the same token, and you'd, you'd mentioned this earlier, there is a, an increasing space for people who are willing to stand up and to make their case known to do that extra with extraordinarily effectiveness using the tools that are at hand. And so maybe that, and you know, I think FIRE is one of the organizations that's actually pushing for that outcome to be the one that is going to prevail. Yeah, well, that would be a catastrophe for the world, by the way. I mean, <laughs> one of the things you bloody Americans have managed with immense, what would you say, panache, and to the benefit of everyone, is you managed to create a culture where, for a long time, you aimed at success and you, by and large, you admired it, were not jealous of it. That's a very, 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 very difficult thing to pull off. And it, if it doesn't happen, then no one gets to be successful. And when no one gets to be successful, then everyone gets to be miserable. And that's the situation that we increasingly find ourselves in. We don't want that to prevail. So I hope we don't cancel the American mind. I hope your book is one of the things that helps everyone wake up to the fact that that might happen. I hope your generation gets a revitalizing vision and good luck with your book. If we had set up a cognitive behavioral therapy program nationwide to demoralize young people, we couldn't possibly have done it more effectively, speaking strictly from a clinical perspective than we have done. Yeah. Every psychologist there is who's worth his or her salt knows that you don't hyper-protect people because you make them dependent. You don't inundate them with idiot trigger warnings. You don't try to infantilize them. You gradually expose them, expose them voluntarily to situations and people and ideas that they're leery of. And by doing so, you fortify them in terms of their own self-concept and their ability to deal with the world. And there isn't anything, there's nothing that therapists who are real know more thoroughly than that. If you don't know that, you're not a therapist, you're a bloody fraud. And despite that, there, there is an absolute dearth of psychologists speaking out against, say, cancel culture, trigger warnings, all of this infantilizing idiocy that characterizes the campuses. Now, that's partly because, as I have found out in Canada, that if you do speak out, and this obviously speaks to cancel culture, the probability that the mid-level, miserable, resentful bureaucrats who are in charge of doing things like handing out professional licenses will come after you. And if you can't afford to have your career threatened, well, then you're in trouble. Now, I don't think that excuses people precisely because I think there's a time and a place to speak 
in some ways, regardless of personal cost. But, and the thing is, you've spoke, so obviously it can be done.